And uh, I do hope and pray that this press conference finds you well, wherever you might be tuning in from. Uh, but I can also tell you that we are just getting started. Uh, so please listen carefully. Uh, conditions are changing very rapidly. And obviously we have a very dangerous situation on our hands uh, with Hurricane Ida. And we can expect devastating impacts to continue for most of the next 24 hours or so as the hurricane passes through the state. As most of you are probably aware by now, a couple of hours ago, Hurricane Ida made landfall officially at Port Fouchon as a Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. As predicted uh, by the National Weather Service, this is one of the strongest storms to make landfall here in modern times. And as had been projected, Ida rapidly anticipated at an unprecedented rate right up until landfall. Uh, and the fact of the matter is an extremely strong Category 4 storm or a Category 5 storm doesn't really make much difference. I think there's, what, five or six, seven miles per hour difference between uh, the winds that were measured on Hurricane Ida and a Category 5 storm. Um, by now, if you're in Ida's path and you've not already begun to feel severe weather, uh, we can just about absolutely assure you that you soon will. If you're sheltering in place, please make sure that you're in the most secure uh, place possible in your home, some interior space, uh, and then please make it your business to stay there uh, until the danger passes. Uh, and because of the possibility that severe winds will damage your home, it is a good idea to have a mattress nearby that you can use to put over yourself and other family members uh, to protect you from any falling debris. We urge you not to be tempted to go outside uh, to take a look and start sightseeing. And for goodness sake, uh, don't drive around right now. It just isn't worth it. The same really goes by for the immediate aftermath of the storm after it's passed by because there will be down power lines, there's going to be standing water, there's going to be debris, other dangers, and quite frankly, we can't tell you yet how soon it will be before first responders are going to be able to respond to calls uh, for assistance. So please don't go out. And the extent to which individuals decide to get out and about will inhibit the flow of first responders and search and rescue assets, high water vehicles, and so forth. So please uh, be patient. Once the storm has passed, you need to be prepared to shelter in place for the first 72 hours. Uh, we have every possible resource ready to go to help you. We'll get there sooner than 72 hours, if at all possible, in order to rescue people across the state of Louisiana. But this is the window of time uh, that it may take in order to get first responders uh, to you, depending upon conditions. You should know that the entirety of the Louisiana National Guard has been activated and currently more than 4,900 guardsmen are out in support of current operations. Uh, just on the search and rescue assets of the National Guard, they're staged across 14 parishes. They have 195 high water vehicles, 73 boats, and 34 helicopters ready, ready to support and assist the citizens of Louisiana. Uh, there remain 169 wildlife and fishery agents with uh, trucks uh, and boats in the same number in order to do search and rescue. And the most robust search and rescue effort that we have uh, consists of more than 900 individuals making up 21 teams that are represented by 16 different states. Uh, and the numbers that I just gave you include uh, the Louisiana State Fire Marshal's Office uh, and their boats. The Department of Transportation has assembled 164 coaches uh, and 20 paratransit vehicles. Uh, 185 coaches will be available by tomorrow morning. 
The Department of Corrections, uh, our prisons have produced more than 34,000 sandbags for communities across South Louisiana. Uh, they've also completed the evacuation of 2,500 inmates from seven local jails, those being Acadia, Orleans, Plaquemines, St. Mary, St. Bernard Vermilion, and Terrebonne Parishes. The CPRA continues to monitor gates across the coastal zone. As of a little earlier today, a total of 459 gates out of 692 are closed. That's up 246 since the briefing yesterday. All of our hurricane protection systems have been fully, uh, uh, I'm sorry, have been completely closed and all structures are fully operational at this time. As late as this morning, uh, additional protection measures were being undertaken by levy districts, such as the South Lapouche Levy District. Uh, they actually completed sheet pile and sandbagging operations to address low areas ahead of the storm. Based on the hurricane track and the wind, rain, and surge forecast uh, for the remainder of the hurricane, uh, the CPRA is anticipating some overtopping of the southeast portions of the La Rose to Golden Meadow levee system, non-federal back levees around Middle Grove and Alliance in Plaquemines Parish, and non-federal levees in Lower St. Bernard Parish as well. And obviously overtopping is concerning, but I want to make sure that everybody understands overtopping and levee failure are not the same thing. Uh, and a levy failure can be uh, much more catastrophic, uh, and so th they are not the same thing. Obviously, we're going to continue to monitor this flood protection system. Uh, I can tell you right now, we do not anticipate any overtopping of the Mississippi River lev levees or overtopping of the levees in the hurricane risk reduction system uh, around the greater New Orleans area. Clearly, you've seen the reports, and, and up until a short while ago, I was able to look at live video feeds. There are very significant storm surge impacts around Port Fouchon and Grand Isle, uh, as well as in Plaquemines Parish near Point Lahash and Braithwaite. CPRA has pre-staged pumps throughout southeast Louisiana and will deploy flood fighting assets to coastal parishes in need of dewatering as soon as it is safe to do so. Uh, this is obviously a very fluid situation. It is rapidly changing, uh, and that's why everyone needs to stay abreast uh, by listening to news uh, and following the guidance from your local officials. Uh, really, nobody in southeast Louisiana should be out on the roads. Uh, but if travel becomes absolutely necessary after the storm, please proceed with extreme caution. There will be hazards out there that you may experience before any law enforcement or DOTD personnel or anybody else may be able to get to first and warn you about it. Uh, this is especially true of debris, down power lines, and standing water. Uh, please check 511LA.org for road closures, uh, and please don't drive through standing water. Uh, that's how we lose an awful lot of people after storms. Many parishes are announcing curfews as we speak, so all Louisianans uh, should follow the directives of their local leaders, which are obviously designed uh, to keep us all safe. And the conditions vary by parish, and they have different considerations in mind. And so please honor these curfews and avoid needless risk to your own safety and that of your family. And please, again, keep streets clear for emergency responders. If you have evacuated, don't be att attempted uh, tomorrow to return before you know that it is okay for you to do so. Please contact your Office of Emergency Preparedness or monitor any announcements that they have as to whether uh, it is the right time for you to return. Uh, the last count that I had shortly before coming over here is we have 1,542 individuals being sheltered across the state. That is in at least 23 different shelters. The vast majority of those are being operated by parishes. Obviously, we expect this number to increase throughout the day and potentially in the days to come as people discover that their homes are no longer habitable. 
For the latest shelter information, text LA Shelter to 898 211, or you can call 211. Heed the guidance of local officials. Local officials will have the most up to date shelter information for a specific area or parish. Uh, as we have mentioned several times before, uh, if you lose electricity and you decide to use a generator, it is imperative that you follow the instructions from the manufacturer. Please make sure that generator is well away from your home in a well-ventilated area. It should not be inside, shouldn't be in a garage or a crawl space, under a window or a vent. Uh, and on occasion, you'll need to refuel the generator. Please make sure that you allow it to cool off for at least 20 minutes before doing so. Um, in closing and before I take some questions, there is no doubt that the coming days and weeks are going to be extremely difficult for our state. And many, many people are going to be tested in ways that we can only imagine today. Uh, but I can also tell you that as a state, we've never been more prepared. Again, all the models that we've seen from the Army Corps of Engineers and from our own CPRA show that the Hurricane Storm Damage Risk Reduction System will hold and perform as intended. Will it be tested? Yes. Uh, but it was built for this moment. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of confidence in the team that we've assembled at the state level, all the local officials and first responders and our federal partners. And by the way, I want to thank FEMA Regional Administrator Tony Robinson uh, from coming out of Texas uh, to embed with us here. And I can tell you that a short while ago, I had a call with Administrator Criswell of FEMA uh, in Washington, and she is very closely uh, watching what's happening here, coordinating with us, and already has uh, various things uh, in route uh, so that we can employ them just as soon as possible, things like generators and so forth. And so I have a tremendous amount of confidence in our team all the state and local officials and our federal partners. But I want you to know I also have confidence in the people of Louisiana. Uh, they always can continue to inspire me with their goodness and their decency and their generosity. And I know that they're going to do everything they can to protect themselves and their families and their neighbors, especially those who may have special needs, maybe they're elderly, so forth. Please make sure that you check on them and stay safe. Uh, and I know it may not seem this way right now for many people out there across our state, but there is always light after darkness, and I can assure you we're going to get through this. Um, and I do invite everyone uh, to offer up a prayer for our state, for the people of our state, uh, that we get through this just as soon as possible and in the best possible shape with the least loss of life. You know, property is replaceable. Lives are not. So that is obviously our first order of priority. So I'm going to stop there and take a few questions. And please feel free uh, to direct your questions to any of the people that we have assembled here. Um, and depending on what you ask me, I may ask them to come up and answer the question anyway. Yes. Yeah. It's weather dependent, and quite frankly, before the weather gets good enough for us to respond, it's going to also be dark. So what I can tell you is our expectation is that we will be ready at first light tomorrow morning uh, to go out uh, to those areas that we know already have received the most damaging impacts from the storm, uh, principally wind and storm surge. You mentioned Grand Isle. Uh, I can tell you that... that uh, the video that I've seen and the reports that I've received are just tremendous amounts of storm surge there and, and wind damage. Uh, the good news is, uh, you know, I hesitate to give you a figure, but something like 98% of Grand Isle evacuated. Um, and the people who were there, I believe, stayed back in, in uh, structures that are specifically designed and built to withstand uh, these types of, of forces. Uh, but I have no doubt we're going to see extreme devastation, Grand Island elsewhere, but we will likely be sometime after first light tomorrow morning uh, before we can get up 
in the air and get vehicles down there. And of course, you know, you got to travel LA-1. Uh, I don't know if you saw the, the video, but LA-1 was not in good shape in the Leeville area early, earlier. So we, we will be working that just as quickly as we possibly can. And in all likelihood, traveling to Grand Island elsewhere in that vicinity uh, via helicopter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I can tell you no tier one hospitals have been evacuated. Now, tier one hospital is what we commonly think of as a hospital. Uh, by definition, we have some rehab hospitals, we have some behavioral health hospitals, and these are typically much smaller, and the patient's needs are not quite as acute. Um, and we have uh, evacuated four such hospitals. Um, and since I'm on it, I'll tell you we've evacuated 22 nursing homes, 18 assisted living facilities, and 61 intermediate care facilities as well. No hospitals have been, been evacuated, the Tier 1 hospitals, because quite simply put, there's nowhere to bring those individuals. Um, they're in a hospital because they need that setting, and we don't have the capacity elsewhere. I mentioned yesterday that um, over the previous 11 days or so, We've been able to achieve a 20% reduction in our COVID inpatient census across the state of Louisiana. The good news is almost all of that happened in Southeast Louisiana, uh, but there's still 2,450 COVID patients in our hospitals across the state, in addition to all the other uh, patients that remain in our hospitals. Uh, and that is a much higher number than we ever experienced in the first three surges. Uh, and so it's still a very daunting uh, situation. Uh, and quite frankly, we're concerned, uh, as we have been for a long time, about staffing. But you know, these storms have an impact on staffing too, uh, in terms of, of uh, do they have to evacuate with their family for some reason? Does their home remain habitable so that they can live at home and go to work? And so we've got an awful lot of work to do but we will have no higher priority than to make sure that our hospitals can remain in operation and functional. Uh, and, and that's going to be a challenge because we expect widespread power outage uh, for some time. Uh, but we know that they, that they have generators. We know that they have uh, stocked up on fuel and water and food uh, and on pharmaceuticals, uh, things like oxygen and so forth. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, we know that the longer the power stays out, the more challenging this is going to be. And the more devastation in an area, the harder it's going to be for them to have the staffing that they need. And, you know, one of the challenges that we're having is we actually had staff, additional staff coming in from out of state yesterday uh, pursuant to contracts that we have executed. Uh, and the staff wasn't able to get in uh, and because and, they didn't have any place to stay. There wasn't a hotel room. Uh, open anywhere. And so that was, a, that was a real challenge. And so I guess I, I say those things just to point out that their challenges are going to manifest themselves in ways that we can't even imagine now. Um, but, but we have a, a great team uh, here and, and across the state locally, and we're going to do everything that we can uh, to prepare for every contingency that, that, we, can, that we can come up with right now. Uh, but this, this is going to be a very, very challenging situation. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.